Hello and welcome. This is Sharon Alamohori. Thanks for joining us today. This is the fifth in our staff retention strategies webinar series. Over the past three months, we've been focusing on staff retention. For more information about how to be proactive in retaining your staff, watch the previous webinars in this series at itechtraining.com slash webinars. Managing for employee retention involves strategic actions to keep employees motivated and focused so that they elect to remain employed and fully productive. But how can you identify when your best staff are considering leaving? And more importantly, how do you mitigate that? Today, we're going to talk about subtle and not so subtle signs you may see in an employee who is considering or actually making plans to leave your practice. When that employee is a valuable one, you've got to see the signs and be ready to act. There are common and specific signs to look for that may indicate an employee is at risk of leaving your practice. These signs include both attitude and behavioral changes. They may begin with subtle signs, which you could easily miss if you're not looking for them. I mean, let's face it, you've got a lot on your plate and scrutinizing your staff's attitudes and behaviors isn't top of the list. But some subtle changes might include things like decreased engagement in their job or complaining more than usual. Maybe they put less effort into tasks that they previously did with gusto. So let's talk about some more specific indicators that you can look for. Decreased productivity. This could include missing deadlines or performance or being disinterested in tasks that they used to not be disinterested in. A lack of commitment to the future. So they may be reluctant to commit to long-term projects or decline invitations to work events, especially ones that are out a little bit as far as dates go. Changes in attitude might be less interested in pleasing their manager or have less motivation or less enthusiasm for work. They may show less effort, they may contribute less in meetings, leave early or come in late more often. And avoiding social interaction, they may avoid social events that you have for your work group. They may find social events less appealing. Another sign is taking off more time than usual. An employee who's looking for new opportunities is likely to take more time off than usual. They might use vacation time to attend job interviews or orientation days with other companies, since these will usually take place during working hours. Before an employee quits, they might try to use up the rest of their vacation or sick time during um, they have a lot left. And if a negative work environment or company culture causes burnout or impacts their mental health, they may try to avoid coming in as much as possible before quitting. These employees might start asking about their leave benefits or suddenly take interest in the specifics of the company's leave policies. An increase in last minute time off requests or a pattern of leave taking that deviates from their norm can be an additional signs of a disengaged employee or a disengaging employee. Another sign is being more active on LinkedIn. Research shows that 92% of recruiters use social media to find good employees and many employees are aware of this. So a sudden increase in LinkedIn activity could be a sign that a staff member is considering a change. They might update their work history, connect with people from other organizations or add new skills to their profile. 
Uh, while not everyone who refreshes their LinkedIn profile is necessarily job hunting, a notable spike in activities might warrant your attention. Another thing that can cause another sign that you might see is, you know, if someone's going through a major life change, major life changes often prompt reevaluations of career choices. Employees experiencing significant personal events such as relocating, a marriage, a divorce, or parenthood might consider quitting for a job that better suits their new circumstances. And the, these life events can shift their financial needs or require different working hours. For instance, a new parent might look for a higher salary to support their family and more flexible hours to accommodate childcare. Someone who has moved might look for an opportunity closer to their home or with a different commuting pattern. These changes can make employees more receptive to new opportunities that align better with their lifestyle and priorities. Making more personal phone calls is another sign, especially if they do it during working hours, and this can be indicative of an employee engaging in a job search. Interviews and follow-up calls with prospective employers often happen during the workday. So an uptick in such calls, especially if taken in a private area or away from the workstation, could signal that an employee is actively pursuing another job opportunity. Also, this pattern might really major life events aligning with their uh, need for a job change. Lastly, making unusual requests, such as when an employee suddenly asks for a significant raise or an unexpected promotion, it might indicate that they're weighing their options outside your company. This behavior could stem from them feeling undervalued or believing that their current role doesn't offer growth opportunities. In some cases, this can be a strategic move the employee has another offer in hand, they might use it as leverage to negotiate better terms with their current employer. However, if their demands are unrealistic or out of sync with the company's norms and practices, it could be a sign that they're ready to move on and are testing the waters for what they can achieve before they make a final decision. What should you do if you suspect an employee is about to quit? Here are plenty of things you can do to decrease employee turnover, whether it's to keep the employee in question from leaving or learning from the experience and preventing it from happening in the future. You also need to take into consideration whether this is an employee that you value. If it's someone that you really don't value and you'd be happy if they left, maybe you don't wanna look so carefully for these signs. But if it's a very valued employee, you should be aware of these signs and be ready to take action. Talk to the employee. A simple conversation can go a long way. And if a team member has taken the time to find another job, there's a reason for it. Sit down with them and give them a chance to express their concerns to you. You might find that even a minor tweak in things like employee benefits or better work hours will convince them to stay. For example, they could be leaving because of a scheduling issue. A small change to the way you assign shifts could be all it takes to persuade them to stick around. You want to optimize your schedule and reduce confusion for your employees and then make smarter decisions that benefit your entire team. Provide growth opportunities. Studies have shown that 82% of employees will quit their job if there is a, quote, lack of career advancement opportunities, unquote. Instead of looking outside your company to hire for management and other upper level positions, give your existing team a chance to prove themselves and take on those roles. And even if you can't promote them, provide more opportunities by increasing their responsibilities. You can also work with each employee to understand what their goals are. For example, your receptionist may eventually want to transition out of customer service and into accounting. Map out the steps that they need to get there and build through a timeline. Address employee burnout. 
Burnout would be a huge trigger for employees to look for another job. And studies show that burnout has only gotten worse over the course of the pandemic, something each and every one of us knows, and we may have experienced burnout ourselves. First, make consistent team communication a priority so you can address potential burnout head on before it becomes an issue. Conduct surveys, hold regular one-on-one -on -one meetings and use a tool. There are different tools or messaging apps to keep a constant pulse on how your employees are feeling. When signs of burnout occur, encourage that employee to take a mental health day or incorporate brain breaks into the day that allow them to step away from their workstation and take a breather. By looking out for these signs and then taking action, you will be able to identify potential issues and do what you can to rectify them. And even if you lose a staff member that's a valued team member, your human resources department should set up an exit interview to learn from the experience and improve, and improve your retention strategy in the future. Quick commercial break. Um, what do we do at ITEP training? Well, we train technicians, we develop administrators, and we also maximize productivity of practices. And why are we putting on these webinars and we're sending newsletters out? It's because we want to be your ultimate source for our ophthalmic administrator clients and those who might be clients. Visit our website at itechtraining.com for more information. Look around, we have a lot of services that may interest you. Catch our webinar. By looking for the signs and then taking action, you'll be able to identify potential issues. And once you see the signs, the employee might be planning to leave, meet with them just to quote, catch up. Ask them how things are going and they might just open up to you. For instance, if it's a life change event that's causing them to consider changing jobs, they might share their concerns with you. If they feel they're underpaid, they may have an undercurrent of resentfulness or they may be standoffish to you. See if you can identify any issues that they have. Then do what you can to rectify the situation to everyone's satisfaction. The truth is that some employees are going to leave no matter what you do to rectify the situation for the employee. But if they are valued employees you want to keep, at least you've tried. Even if you lose a team member, you or your human resources department should set up an exit interview, as we talked about before. How, do, how do you, should you respond when an employee asks for more money? First, don't react right away. There's actually very little you can say in that moment. And there's nothing to gain from saying no right away. And you can't say yes without checking with HR or your doctors perhaps. So resist the urge to say something like, it's not up to me, or I can't decide that because that undermines your authority. And watch your facial expressions and body language as well as your words. Your first reaction, regardless of whether you think the employee deserves a raise, should be curiosity. A simple three-word sentence. Tell me more. It indicates that you're not dismissing the request and it gives you more information about where the person's coming from. Take notes while the person tells you why she deserves a pay raise. Nothing communicates, I'm taking you seriously more than writing things down. So take notes after you ask them that question. Ask follow-up questions if necessary. The objective is to get enough information that you can then explore whether it's an appropriate request or not. Remaining neutral and explaining that you will look into the matter, thanks for bringing that to my attention. I want to give it careful consideration and I'll get back to you within two weeks. You want to buy yourself enough, as, a, as much time as you can to do research and talk to the appropriate people. Another thing that's good to do is to acknowledge their courageousness in coming forth. 
This is an emotionally loaded, loaded conversation. And as awkward as it feels to you, it feels five times more so to that employee. There's typically a lot of thought and agonizing that precedes a raise request. Chances are they're feeling vulnerable. So even if you're irritated, acknowledge that what they're doing takes courage. This person is giving you an opportunity to retain them rather than going out and finding another job. Remember that. So you should also be somewhat grateful if you think about it that way. Be less, be attuned to less direct requests as well. Because not everyone will come out and say they want to raise. They might drop hints about how hard they've been working or even mentioning that headhunter that called them. Take these indirect signals seriously. Some people don't feel comfortable making a direct ask, and women are far, far less likely to ask for a raise than men. And if you don't want to lose someone that's valuable to your practice, it's smart to pay attention to these hints, maybe even asking some follow-up questions, especially if you think the person might be at risk of leaving. Evaluate the arguments. Once you've ended the initial conversation, it's on you to figure out what to do. Appropriate request is one where the individual can demonstrate that her compensation or her value are not correlated. In simple terms, it means her pay is not in line with what she deserves. Think about both internal equity, is this person fairly paid, are they, especially compared to their peers, and the open market. Does a person doing this job in another company get similar pay? Gather as much information as you can, such as salary data for your industry. Also consider how important that person is to you, your team and your company. Think about the individual's career trajectory. You want to reward and promote on a challenging pace and keep them hungry to improve. Speaking of salary guides and salary surveys, ITEP training does an annual salary survey of ophthalmologists, ophthalmic practices every January. And we pull uh, these practices, we divide the responses by nine different roles and by different regions of the country. Everyone who participates gets a salary survey for free. I will post on social media and on um, both uh, LinkedIn and on the ASOA listserv, the business listserv, to let you know when we're doing that survey. And um, if you'll participate, we would love it because the more that participate, the better the data is. We're hoping to double our number of respondents this year versus next year. This year we had a little over um, 200 responses, if I recall correctly. We want to double that if we can. So again, you want to consider how important that person is to your team and your company, but also know the limits. Some arguments for increased pay just don't hold water. It shouldn't be because the person needs more money or feels he's the best person in the department. And the request should not be based on a short-term effort. Just because somebody's killed themselves on a special project does not mean they deserve more. Don't confuse a heroic sprint with a consistent high performance over time. Yes, work like that does deserve reward and recognition, but instead of giving a raise, perhaps you can give a one-time bonus. Allow the person to attend a conference or provide extra time off. There's a toolbox full of things that you can give an employee that say, I value you, and they don't necessarily end up as more money on their monthly paycheck. You can also keep in mind that there's a limit to how much you can pay someone in a certain position. Jobs have value independent of the performer. If that person wants to make more money, they might have to take a different kind of job, ideally within your organization. But it's important to help them understand this. Talk to the right people, your HR or your physicians. If you have a good performer and you're concerned about retention, go to bat for your best employees. 
It's often easy for the HR team or the doctor to say no, especially since they don't really know the employees as well as you do. So try to make it as easy as possible for those gatekeepers to say yes. Make your case clearly and back up your arguments with as much information as you've got. They have to believe that you're making an objective decision and that you're not going to come back the next day and ask for a raise for another team member. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts. You do want to treat the person with respect throughout the process, even if you think the raise is undeserved. Acknowledge the courage it took to make that request. And you press your manager or HR to grant an increase for someone you believe deserves it. But don't say yes right away. Instead, ask them to tell you more. Ask for more information. Don't grant the request without making clear that it was earned and that now you have higher expectations for that person. You don't want them to think that they just got the raise because they asked for it. They have to earn it and deserve it. Don't blame others for your inability to grant the request on height for higher ups. For instance, if your doctor or HR says no to the uh, increase, don't say, well, it wasn't my decision. It was these people's fault that, that you didn't get the raise. That, that takes responsibility, even when you disagree with the decision. If you're not able to grant the raise, don't mince words. Come right out and say, I have some bad news for you. Make it clear what research you did so the person understands her request was taken seriously. We looked at how your pay compares with people here in the company and in the outside market, and we found that your pay is appropriate. For that reason, we're not going to make any changes in your compensation. And try to demystify the process for them. Most people, For most people, compensation is a black box. You do a great service for your people by telling them how it works at your company. At the same time, don't make them feel bad for asking. And don't say negative things about the person or their performance when you're delivering that bad news. When you're delivering good news, and if you're able to grant the raise, you might be tempted to go back and say, I've got great news, we're giving you more money, or you're right, that you were underpaid. You'll see the increase in your next paycheck. That would be a mistake. If words get out that the way you get a raise is simply by asking one, you're going to have a line outside your door. And instead, explain that you shared the request with HR and management, that you've done everything carefully to research and discuss whether the raise was warranted, and that you've collectively decided to raise their pay. At the end of the entire process, you want the person to feel that they earned it by demonstrating their value, not begging for more money. You might even ask them to continue demonstrating their value by broadening the scope of their role. After all, the point is to help them grow and continue to add value to the company. I hope today's presentation was helpful to you. It will be, um, it is being recorded and it will be posted on our website. The email or the website address is itechtraining.com slash webinars. So you can watch all of our previous webinars there, including the rest of our series of staff retention strategies. Our next webinar will be in two weeks. It's going to involve um, talking about investing in excellence and why training staff is crucial despite cutbacks. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Have a good day.